What's up, everybody? Hope you all had a great day. Um, getting into this episode of GH, listen, I'm surprised that Jordan didn't reach out to um, Tagger. I'm, I'm very surprised by that. I'm like, his daughter is missing, and she, of all people, didn't call Tagger. I mean, I understand, you know, telling Portia or whatever, but Tagger should be, you know, in the know. Um, it was so funny because Portia was sitting here talking about, oh, her daughter must be so scared. I'm like, man, <laughs> you must not know your daughter very well because scared is the last thing that she is. I'm pretty sure on the, on the inside, she probably petrified, but she's showing a lot of bravery right now. And I'm like, Portia don't even know. Scared is the last thing going through Trina's mind right now. I'm like, little does Portia know her daughter is literally the CEO of the escape plan. I'm just saying. Um, so that was hilarious. And I get that, you know, Curtis wants to, if push comes to shove, he wants to rescue Trina from the boat or whatever. I get it, you know, cause that could potentially be his daughter, but whether that's his daughter or not, you know, she's still a part of his family and I get it, but I would prefer if it came down to that, I would hope that Curtis isn't the only one on that boat. I would prefer if him and Taggart worked together because I do feel like Taggart should be a part of this. There's quite a few people I think that should be a part of this storyline that are not a part of this storyline. But that's neither here nor there right now. But if if it came down to it, I think him and Taggart should work together. In a perfect world, when it comes to this rescue mission, the people, this is my personal opinion, the people I would have on that boat to help take Victor down would be Sonny. It would be Curtis. It would be Taggart. I might throw Sam or, or you know, Sam in there or Jordan, you know, whoever. I might throw them in there because he does have a good amount of guards and you're going to need some help. But in a perfect world, those would be the main people I would put up there to, like, help out. You know what I mean? Um, In a perfect world. So, anyway... I don't blame Jordan for not being too thrilled that Laura kept her out of the loop because my thing was, and when I said this the other day that Jordan should be embarrassed as police commissioner because all of this was happening under her under her nose, I'm not saying that I'm blaming Jordan per se for all of this. It's just that, you know, it's just embarrassing. It's like you're the police commissioner and the mayor and everybody else is the even the DA is keeping you out of the loop and you're the fucking commissioner. I would have been pissed too. I don't blame Jordan. Like, I would have been ready to throw my badge away. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, shit, if it wasn't for them bills, I would have threw my bill, my uh, badge right on away. I would have resigned. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, she is in a high position and, you know, them bills don't stop. So I get it. But um, she had every right to be up in her feelings about it. You know, Laura tried to make amends by letting her know, like, listen, I do apologize, but you got the full support of the mayor's office. I'm like, that's not good enough because... All of them was working together on this and you didn't feel the need to clue in your police commissioner. I mean, I understood. I understand that, you know, they didn't want a lot of people to know, but it's like, come on now. If you can't trust your police commissioner, then who the hell can you trust? And why do you have her as your police commissioner? I'm just saying she should have definitely been in the loop. Um, But better late than never, because I respect the fact that even though she was upset about it, she still wanted to work with Laura. She was like, you know, let's work together now to bring these people home, you know, to bring Spencer home, bring Trina home. Let's work together on this. And I agree because they, it's all hands on deck at this point. They're going to need all the help they can get to find that boat. You know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do. Um, I know Dante got to be exhausted. Every time I see Dante, his facial expressions be having me on the floor. Cause I know he tired. All hell is breaking loose around him, and it's like he has to deal with so many different situations damn near at once. It's like you got the Victor situation, you got Cody needing help, then on top of that, you got um, this whole drama with Sonny and Michael. I know he's exhausted, you know what I'm saying? But I do love his talks with Sonny, especially when they were talking about Stone and Mike and stuff like that. I love it when him and, you know, Sonny have their conversations and all that, because I, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's genuine. Um... And I feel like he's gotten to that point now where he understands Sonny on a different level. 
You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, their relationship has come a long way since they first met and first found out that they were father and son. So I enjoy their time together. Um, my issue is I understand Dante wants to keep the peace in the family. Like he wants all this nonsense with Sonny and Michael to end finally. But I'm not here for Sonny calling Michael reaching out again because I feel like every time Sonny reach out to Michael, Michael pretty much gives Sonny his ass to kiss. And in my opinion, if it was me, I wouldn't I wouldn't call Michael because I don't believe in kissing somebody's ass just to get along with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think Sonny, I get that that's his son or whatever. But at this point, I feel like Michael should be the one doing the reaching out. You know, Sonny has reached out to him multiple times in the last few months to try and reconcile, to try to make things right. And I understand he's upset with Sonny, but I feel like he's been upset with Sonny longer about this Nina situation than he was about the AJ situation. You know what I'm saying? That's something he should have got revenge on Sonny. And don't get me wrong, Michael started to get revenge on him. You know, he played a good hand, but he caved a little too soon. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on. I feel like the AJ, Sonny killing AJ trumps the situation with Nina. You know what I'm saying? It seems like he's way more mad about that than when Sonny murdered AJ. And I just find that to be stupid. I feel like Michael just needs to throw in the towel at this point and just reconcile with Sonny. Because I'm like, this road that he's going down, it's going to have dire consequences if he continues. And it might have dire consequences for himself. Because I know it's going to put the family in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's putting his siblings in the middle of it once shit really hit the fan with this whole deck situation. So, Michael really needs to reconsider this nonsense. But, you know, it looked like he might have been turning the corner after that phone call with Sonny. Who knows? You never know with Michael because he could get emotional about something one minute but then be back on the revenge trail the next. So, who knows? Um, Speaking of Michael, I... That whole scene with him and Willow, I didn't give not one damn about it. I, I, I tell y'all this every time I see them. Like, I just don't care. It's like I'm over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired of hearing her say, oh, I only got one more chance. I only got this long. Like, girl, you've been pretty much dying since last year. Like, why don't you just die already? <laughs> just put us all out of our misery. Like, just go. No, nobody care about you and Michael getting married today, tomorrow, next Kwanzaa. I don't give a damn. It's like, just perish already jesus like we got bigger fish to fry we ain't got time to be dealing with them in a nonsense um so anyway moving on from that um i'm loving you know spencer and trina working together i really am i'm enjoying the hell out of it um spencer definitely came up with a diversion it, it was a good one too um I wasn't expecting him to yoke, uh, to grab up, um, Obrecht the way he did and he he uh, hold that knife up to her throat. I wasn't expecting it. I really wasn't. But it was a good diversion, though. I enjoyed that. Um, he's definitely showing off that inner Cassidy. And I'm here for it. Because, you know, he's proven to Victor, like, listen, you can only push somebody so far for they push back. But that diversion was good, though. Um, Victor's whole plan with this Ice Princess thing is so delusional and crazy. Um, like, the way he was talking about that pathogen and stuff and trying to wipe out a good portion of the population, it sounded like COVID to me. That's what it sounded like. It sounded just like COVID. I'm like, because that's what COVID did. Wiped out a good chunk of the population. I'm like, a lot of people died due to COVID. And that's how it sounded to me that he done came up with and of course, you know, he needs Lisa to protect the people that he care about, which ain't many. Um, it's not a whole lot of people that he actually want to survive. But, you know, if I was I don't blame Lisa for telling him, hell no, that she not going to help him because he's sitting there talking about, oh, if you don't, it's going to be dire consequences. Yeah, for you, too. Because if he releases that pathogen, he himself can die. He can die. Spencer can die. Literally, a lot of them can die. So it's like a damn if you do, damn if you don't. You know what I mean? Because my whole thing is Liesl got grandkids to think about. So if she does protect the people that Victor cares about, how is that going to protect her grandchildren or the people that she loves? Because they can die from this. You know what I'm saying? So I don't blame her for saying no. I would have said no too. You know, what's in it for her? So if she do all of this, a good chunk of people that she give a fuck about will die. I would have said no. Victor done lost his little ever loving mind because his whole plan just sound wackadoo it's just <laughs> it's straight bizarre it's like the hell are you doing um 
Hopefully, though, Trina could get in that, that control room and radio for some damn help. Because I don't understand how Jordan or them talking about they want to work together. How y'all going to find this boat? The GPS is off. How you going to find it? Unless y'all all just charter a boat and just go different directions or whatever to find this this boat. That's the only thing I could think of right now. How else you going to get to it? Um, It's in the middle of nowhere at this point. It's not on the map. You know, how you going to find it? Um. So, anyway moving on from that i am so glad anna is gonna recover i i mean i didn't have a doubt in my mind and i love the fact that as much as valentine wants revenge on his father i respect the fact that valentine basically told anna we're gonna sit this shit out like he brought her up to speed about what's going on i don't blame him for sitting it out i don't blame him i do not blame him at all um they had enough excitement, you know, and he's putting his woman first, you know what I mean? Like he's putting her and her health above revenge. And I feel like that's such a different Valentine, you know what I'm saying? Because usually Valentine is all about revenge. So the fact that he's putting Anna above that, he's coming a long way. He's coming a long way. Oh yeah. Back to the Liesl thing. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, didn't Victor say that he would spare some of her people if she helped him or something like that? I think he did. So I think her grandkids just might be safe. I think he also said he would throw Scott in there too. I think I think so. Um But yeah, you but you can never really fully trust Victor. Like Victor gives people a lot of lip service just to get you to do what he wants. You know. So I I wouldn't put it nothing past that little creepy man. Cause Victor really thinks like this plan is not gonna blow up in his face, and we all know it will. It's definitely gonna blow up in his little face. But he, he got that that crazy delusion. They, oh, he gonna pull this off, sir. You can't even get an erection. You can't even have fun in the bedroom. So how you gonna? If you can't pull that off, how you gonna pull this off? It ain't gonna work. Give it up. You might as well turn yourself in. <laughs> might as well give it up, sir. You lost. Um. So anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. I'll see you all later. Peace.